All right, in this video, we're going to cover one of these uh, crypto news articles I came across on the Nice Hash Digest blog. This is from December 14th, 2023, and it is right here. Over $500,000 stolen from Ledger Connect Kit Library Breach. Ledger, a hardware wallet manufacturer, experienced a security breach resulting in the theft of over $500,000 as reported on Etherscan's address page. Yeah, wow. This breach occurred after a uh, phishing attack, phishing attack, whatever, however you pronounce it, which compromised a former employee's account, leading to unauthorized access and modification of the uh, Ledger Connect kit library. The attacker released compromised versions 115 to 117 that redirected funds. The attacker released compromised versions huh, that redirected funds to their wallet. Ledger quickly responded, releasing a secure update version 118 and working with Wallet Connect to neutralize the threat. Tether has uh, managed to freeze the attacker's wallet containing uh, $254,000 at the time of the report. That's pretty much a man-in-the-middle attack. I'm not going to go through the rest of the articles. This is one I want to focus on. I've heard of this happening before. I know people this has happened to. And again, it's called man-in-the-middle where they can get into the software, get into one of the data files through malware on the device, and or they sell the device third party and then you get the ledger hardware it could be any hardware wallet right it's just would you it's ledger it could be any hardware wallet you know you you plug into your pc your laptop whatever uh, that they get in and they compromise the address and so whenever you're pushing stuff to your hardware wallet it's going to go into their their uh, crypto address their wallet address I've seen this where you do go by the ledger or some hardware wallet third party site, uh, middleman vendor, stuff like that. And that's when I hear people lose their crypto and they lose their minds too. They, they got scammed. They got, they got hacked, right? Or, you know, they got in there, they got a, a bad ledger and uh, it doesn't have their right address in it. And it just goes off site to someone else's address. Like in this article went to, what is it? A tether wallet and they were able to actually um, freeze that attacker's wallet probably some guy out of the uh, you know india region or the uh, eastern europe or something like that that's usually where all this stuff happens or comes from yeah so if you're going to buy these wallets not only do you have to worry about where you purchase it from now you also have to um, make sure it's not hacked somehow through a version of the software you're running on that hardware wallet. So even if you purchase directly from the manufacturer, there is still a risk. Let's jump over here real quick and go through this part of it. We'll we'll keep going down this rabbit hole. There we go, big daddies. Are we up? Hold on a sec. <clears throat> All right, this I found. An old article, but it still applies. This is from... February 3rd, 2018. Again, this is this stuff's been around and it's good to know your your vulnerabilities with this crypto. You could lose it all. Uh, I was scammed once. I was just my own stupidity. Sent it to the wrong address, just under the wrong uh, idea of what I was doing. It was just dumb. Never send anything. If you have to send any crypto, sit back a while and say, why am I sending this? And where am I sending it? What For what reason? And it is take a few minutes to digest what you're doing and then you'll come to your senses like oh no i'm stupid don't do this yeah let's go through this one real quick uh ledger addresses man in the middle attack which i just mentioned that threatens millions of hardware wallets all right this is good to know you got to know this stuff hardware wallet manufacturer ledger which sold over 1 million devices last year has alerted its users to a major attack vector that's recently been discovered this is 2018 right although there are no reported cases of the attack being successfully deployed the threat itself is very real today ledger urged users of its cryptocurrency wallets to take 
steps to avoid uh, falling prey to the address spoofing attack. So man in the middle or address spoofing, right? Let's get into it. Let's let's educate ourselves today. Beware of man in the middle. Hardware wallets are regarded as one of the safest means. Okay, sure. Uh, then why are there attacks? All right. The USB cold storage devices limit this uh, the sort of attack vectors uh, synonymous with being connected to the web. But to send funds or issue a receiving address, a hardware wallet has to be plugged into an internet-enabled device. That's where they get you. And researchers have discovered a vulnerability that affects ledger devices at this stage. A new published report reveals the, uh, the way the man-in-the-middle MITM attack would play out. It explains. Uh, ledger wallets generate the displayed received address using JavaScript code running on the host machine. Malware can simply replace the code exactly. Responsible for generating the received address with its own address. It just reroutes it to their wallet, the scammers, causing all future deposits to be sent to the attacker. Amazing. Man in the middle attack. You can Google it, and this is kind of explaining it too. All right, the attack, if executed, would leave the victim unaware at first that anything was the matter. Exactly. To prove that the uh, vulnerability is real, the report's authors have posted a proof of concept that demonstrates the attack in action. The severity of the attack is heightened by the fact that with Ledger's wallet software stored in the app data folder, it is relatively easy for malware to modify the receiving address. As report notes, all the malware needs to do is replace one line of code. This can be achieved with less than 10 lines of Python. They just gotta go in, probably a JSON configuration file, find the address, blammo, substitution replace, probably like two lines of Python, uh, if that. Probably, yeah, probably under 10. And then just replace it with their address and bam, it just funnels everything to the uh, attacker's wallet address. This is, this is good to know, man. MIT, I'm man in the middle. It happens on uh, Ethernet all the time. And you're sitting out of Starbucks uh, coffee shop using their free Wi-Fi on a cruise ship using the free Wi-Fi. There are people there are sniffing the Internet. They're sniffing the, they're sniffing the router. They're getting all the packets. They're getting all your information. And uh, yeah, you got to watch this stuff, man. All right. Solution of source to voice of coming to this tech. There is a means of verifying the receiving address is correct. As the report explains, uh, blah, blah, blah. All right. To mitigate the man in the middle. Uh, let's see. Always verify your receive address on the device screen by clicking on the monitor button. Okay. So you got to double verify, triple dog, double verify this solution. While effective, it's not fail safe in that it's relying on the user remembering to follow this procedure every time they transact. As the report points out, a proper solution would be to force the user to validate the receive address before every receive transaction. Just like the wallet forces the user to approve every send transaction. Interesting. All right. That's the system that Treasure now uses with its hardware wallets, mending the user use of 2FA, two-factor authentication, simply to access the receiving address. It is hoped that Ledger will follow suit and update its devices to adopt this methodology. Hardware wallets are still significantly safer than leaving funds stored in a centralized exchange, but no solution is entirely foolproof, as the Ledger case demonstrates. Yeah. Do not ever leave your crypto on an exchange. Get it in there to transact, buy, sell, get out, get it back. Because uh, look up Voyager, look up BlockFi. They'll freeze your account if they go belly up and you lost it all. Uh, even I will buy on Fidelity's crypto account. They just uh, activated a month or two ago. Not your keys, not your coins. I repeat that all the time. It's so true. But, you know, I have small amount of couple bucks in there just playing with some trading on Bitcoin to see if I can actually make money. Oh, it's up 20%. Dump it. Boom. Make some profit. Sit on it for a while and go, when can I buy back in? That's what I'm playing with. But I, it's a fool's errand to keep my stuff there. 
they own it though. The only way to get it off is to sell it, go to fiat, boom, move the fiat back to a brokerage account or something. But now these ledgers got me nervous. I know this is 2018, but something happened recently with someone I knew. And uh, yeah, they had this man in the middle spoof address attack. And yeah, they, they yeah, it was bad. It's, it's a real, it's a real concern from $1 to a million bucks, man. It doesn't matter. They want that Bitcoin. All right, let's look at the update. Update. Since this post was published, Ledger has reiterated that this is an industry-wide issue. All hardware wallets are affected. This is not a vulnerability of the device, but a reminder about the fact you cannot trust what you see on the screen of your computer. It has also announced... Who has also announced? Ledger has also announced an updated Ledger Chrome application. We released an update to the Chrome application that will force users to verify destination address on their Ledger hardware device. All right. Uh, not just on the screen of the computer. This feature has been available for months. We will now make it more visible. The Ledger wallet desktop app will also be updated soon. So even they're saying, if you look at the screen to validate the address, that could be wrong. It could be misleading. It could show you the your address wallet address but in the software it could be the attacker's address so it may all look good on the screen boy but it could still send it off to this to the attacker's wallet address again this is 2018 but this stuff still goes on man you gotta you gotta educate yourself be aware of the risk move your crypto as little as possible you can do a software wallet you can do a ledger if you have a ledger and a software wallet and stuff on your own computer you got to have the keys secured in a safe or something. Uh, and also the hardware wallet, I would secure that in a safe. Get into a, a, a use case, a pattern of life where you know exactly where it is, no matter what. Don't just throw it on your desk. It's going to disappear. And then you're going to be out all your crypto because it's on that freaking little device. It's over, Johnny. So just be careful with it. It's What is it? With great crypto comes great responsibility, right? I don't know what to say. It's just it's just people are out there. You are honest people. You're mining crypto. You're buying crypto. You're experimenting with crypto. You're being good citizens. But there's bad players out there. They see that you're a good citizen with money. They want to take your money. And they want to put it in their wallets. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Have you guys ever experienced any of this? Any of these uh, man-in-the-middle attack, these uh, uh, address spoofing things. If if so, post it down below. Warn others. Help others out. Just be careful with your crypto. Use, um, yeah, validate it. Validate the address. Use uh, trust trust uh, trustworthy exchanges, Coinbase, Fidelity, whatever. Uh, is it Gemin Genesis, Gemini? I don't even know. The, the, the Vossel Twin Brothers. Is that their name? What is it? Gemini? I haven't. I've never used it. I think I opened an account, but I never used them. Uh, but yeah, be be wary of exchanges like the like uh, that were similar to the BlockFi's and the Voyagers of the world. If uh, people are giving you lots of staking rewards, and you have to host your crypto on their site, don't do it. The juice is not worth the squeeze. The risk is not worth the reward. The risk is losing it all and maybe getting nothing back, which Voyager and BlockFi asked the guys that had a lot of crypto left on there. They got they got they got boned. Um, I got my stuff off, but I had fifty bucks in rewards left, and I ended up getting nineteen bucks of that check from Voyager as part of the uh, bankruptcy re reorganization settlement crap. <laughs> it's funny. It's just thank God two a month and a half before I got everything out. I just sensed something wasn't right. I don't know what. It, I wish I could remember what that moment was but i got everything down to my wallets so it was my keys my coins and i could sleep at night but now you still have to watch out if you put it on a ledger you you know or any hardware device just be careful do dil diligence verify every address uh doubt but verify right i don't know just be careful anyway that's all i got this was an interesting article because it does hit home well knowing people that actually had this attack um on them, on them personally, and they lost some crypto. Yeah. All right, what do you guys think about this? 
post your comments below, and uh, I'll be back later with another one. All right, take care.